as the director of the Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory of the University of Belgrade, as a fellow and one of the founders of the Group for Social Engagement Studies, and on behalf of the Center for Ethics, Law and Applied Philosophy, as well as the Center for Advanced Studies, Southeast Europe of the University of Rijeka, I wish you the warmest welcome to Belgrade. This is the fourth conference of the Group for Social Engagement Studies of the Institute for Philosophy, entitled Social Justice, New Perspectives, New Horizons. Allow me to immediately thank our main partner in the organization, Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, more precisely, Anna Manojlovic, without whose kindness and goodwill there would not be no conference, and the director of this foundation, Mr. Heinz Albert Hutmacher, today unfortunately not here with us. Allow me to thank some other persons, dear friends and associates, who have been following the project of the group and the institute for a number of years. These are Heinrich Böll Stiftung, above all, Paula Petrich, Hanna Čopic, and the director, Andreas Poltermann, our great friend, as well as Sunčica Sido and my long-term associate in my activities at the Institute, Matthias Müller Viferig, the director of Goethe Institute in Belgrade. I'm very happy that we have with us today, thanks above all to the efforts of Milica Trifunovic, Mr. Alexander Jung, the Chargé d'Affaires of the German Embassy in Serbia, and I would like to now ask him as well as to greet us with a few words and confirm with his presence that this three-day endeavor is in one way or another a truly German-Serbian regional event. Please. Dobro jutro, good morning and good morning. Um, dear Professor Bojanic, thanks a lot for the kind words um, and um, of course esteemed professors and scholars from Germany, Serbia and the region. It is indeed my great pleasure to participate in this opening of the high level conference of the group of social engagement studies which is focusing on the issue of social justice. I would very much like to commend the organizers from your institute together with German political foundations, namely uh, the Friedrich Ebert Foundation, and with the support of Goethe Institute for setting up this very high level, high quality program with the participation of eminent scholars. This conference is yet another proof, both for the widths and for the depths of the exchange between Germany, Serbia and the region. Not only in the economic, political and cultural field, but also as we see today as regards academic studies. Intellectual exchange and contacts between German scholars and thinkers are not at all a recent development, to name the most classic ones. Already Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and the outstanding Serbian philologist Vuk Karadzic had a fruitful exchange and both took also on the topic of justice. Vuk Karadzic compiled a collection of Serbian folk tales dealing with the issue of justice. Amongst them, the well-known story, Justice and Injustice, about two brothers trying to prove each others if the world in its basic structure is a fair one or an unfair one. To Goethe, on the other hand, the sentence is attributed that impartiality is the life of justice, as justice is of all good government. Thanks to an exchange of letters, we know that Goethe and Vuk Karadzic were in contact on several issues of joint interest. Although we don't know if they also exchanged their very ideas on the concept of justice. The conference you are having in the next few days will be very much dedicated to the concept of justice and to be more precise, its social dimension. Talking about social justice means to talk about an essential part of good governance. It is about the preconditions for peaceful and prosperous coexistence within and amongst nations, guaranteeing equal rights for people of different gender, race, social or migratory background. Looking at the different panels and plenary sessions ahead, 
I am sure this conference will bring very fruitful debates on the political, economic, legal and other aspects of the question of social justice. On a personal note, I can say that I would have loved to stay for the entire conference. Having studied political science at the University of Leipzig myself, I very much um, was inspired by the study of Aristotle, Rawls and other scholars and uh, I would have very much uh, loved to stay for longer here. Um, in this vein, I wish you a very fruitful and inspiring and productive conference um, and would love to join in in the next days for, for some panels as well. Thanks a lot. Allow me to thank Jean-Baptiste Cuisin, director of the French Institute, and also Colarat's Foundation for the hospitality in the last two or three years. I have a fervent hope that in a few years' time, in the spirit of social justice and equality, we will be on the horizon see the moment, or the just moment, when the men and women here will change place. Gazela Pudar and Adriana Zakharievich, the true organizers of this conference, will replace myself and Anna Paula Hanna Milica, the real initiators of this theater of common action and cooperation, will I hope replace the others mentioned, as well as perhaps the gentleman, and along with me, the host of this conference, Nikola Tanic, Assistant Minister of Education, Science and Technological Development, unfortunately absent today, today morning. Let me take also publicly opportunity to offer a special kinds, special thanks to Nicola for the support to the Institute in founding the regional center in Novi Sad. It is thanks to the Ministry and the Provincial Government of Vojvodina, the Secretary Vladimir Popov and Milivoj Beshlin present here today, that the Institute will, in parallel to Belgrade, develop a program in Vojvodina. And along with that, the next conference of the Group of, for Social Engagement Studies will be held in Novi Sad. As usual, our friend Nikola Stevanovic is the designer of the conference poster. I suspect that in the days to follow, some of the participants will attempt to interpret it. Why a feast? Why a clad feast? Why a feast in folds and reliefs rather than naked feast? Can nothing but a gathering or collective of various actors in rigorous and disciplined assembly brought together such that it represents strength or power, gathered in a feast and covered but not hidden? Can nothing but all that represent the effort of the social to advance towards justice and equality? Does simply being together close enough to one another imply equality and thus justice? Or conversely, allow to insist on this, a society is equal when people relate to each other as equals. This is not an issue of a just or equitable distribution of some kind of currency of egalitarian justice, a phrase of or syntagma of Jerry Coins, nor, on the other hand, of owners disciplining non-owners. This, this is the answer capitalism offers to Michael Walzer's question, who disciplined whom? At issue are relations or acting. At issue is discipline, which is beyond domination, hierarchy, exploitation, and social exclusion. Lest we forget, a feast means that no one is excluded and that all members are in harmony and perfect symmetry. And before I turn the podium over to Maria Nivković, that is Wolfgang Merkel, our old friend, and Lisa Herzog, let me remind you on a fragment penned by Emil Durkheim in 1897. Here, too, it is a question of discipline, and only discipline. I quote, truly, the nearer this 
ideal equality, egalité idéale, ideal equality, were approached, the less social restraint will be necessary. But it is only a matter of degree. One sort of heredity will always exist, that of natural talent, intelligence, taste, scientific, artistic, literary, or industrial ability, courage and manual dexterity are gifts received by each of us as birth, as the heir of Wilt receives his capital, or as the nobleman formally received his title and function. A moral discipline will therefore still be required to make those less favored by nature accept the lesser advantages which they owe to the chance of birth. Shall it be demanded that all have an equal share and that no advantage be given those more useful and deserving? But then there would have to be a discipline far stronger to make these accept a treatment merely equal to that of the mediocre and incapable. But like the one first mentioned, this discipline can be usefully only if considered, can be useful only if considered just by the people subject to it. When it is mitant only by custom and force, peace and harmony are illusory. I wish you the best of luck in working and acting together today and tomorrow and after tomorrow.